Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. If you caught our video on this Solid Technics uh, wrought iron quenched frying pan where we unboxed it, seasoned it, and then uh, gave it a test and a review, you'll remember that it came with a little disc, um, actually in the shape of a heart, that was something called Iron Love. And it's a mixture of beeswax and a couple of different types of oil that you use to condition your pan or season your pan. And while I was using it, it kind of reminded me that I do something similar with cannelet tins. Um, cannelet is a uh, French pastry, and you cook it in these little copper molds um, that have tin on the inside of the mold, and then you, you baste it with a mixture of butter and beeswax. Led me down a rabbit hole of research uh, to realize that uh, there is a long-standing tradition of just using beeswax um, to set up brand new cast iron pans. So I thought, and instead of buying this, let's learn how to make it ourselves, and then we're going to season these two brand new cast iron pans from Lodge. So these pans are brand new. Uh, I brought them home from the store, gave them a wash to clean off anything that was, uh, that was on them from transportation, and I bought two of them because we're going to do one with this puck, this seasoning puck, and one we're just going to use oil. We're going to season them both at the same time and see which works better. And I've put a, uh, a little carabiner on one of them so that I can distinguish between the two because unlike Adam Ragusa, I'm never going to remember which one is on the right. So I've got the oven preheated uh, to 220 degrees. I'm just going to stick the pans in and get them heated up while we make the puck. Now, a um, bunch of research on this and I have beeswax in my kitchen because I do use it for other things, those pastries that I mentioned. Uh, and you want to make sure that you get beeswax that is uh, pure beeswax. Um, some beeswax that you buy for making candles has been cut with other things. You don't want that. You want 100% pure beeswax. And these usually come in about 25 grams. Um, and of course this time it's 34 grams. So it's one part beeswax and three parts oil. And I've read that it's best to use a mix of two different kinds of high smoke point oils. I usually use grapeseed oil um, for seasoning my pans. A lot of people use canola. Um, avocado oil is one that I see all the time. I've seen people use walnut oil, flax. Flaxseed oil is definitely one that a lot of people use. And so whichever two oils you decide to use, we're going to mix those together with the beeswax. So if the beeswax is 34 grams, I need a total weight of 136 grams total. So I'm just going to free pour. Um, you want about half and half of each of these oils. And um, I don't think that you need to be totally exact. So I'm just going to pour it in until I get to 136, 134. There we go, 136 grams. Now, uh, this is just a soup can. And I'm going to put this into this pot. This pot has bubbling water, just barely simmering. So I'm going to drop the can in here. And we're just going to gently heat this until it all melts together. Um, and just kind of swirling it every once in a while to make sure that it's all mixed as well. Okay, so I'm not a chemist. Um, and my explanation of what's happening here is at best maybe like grade three or grade four. My understanding of what happens is you put the oil inside the pan, if you're just using straight oil, um, and then you heat that pan up and it changes the structure of the oil so that it all links together and then it's no longer oil, it becomes a polymer. Now I've read lots of online discussion where some chemists are saying it's not a polymer at all, it's something else. Um, no matter what it is, the net effect is the oil links together and creates a surface um, that becomes no stick or close to non-stick, protects the wrought iron from rust and decay and creates a good surface to cook on. So no matter what's happening, that's what's going on, it's sort of linking together. The idea here is that there's something in the beeswax that increases that bond, that improves that bond. And by using two different oils um, that bond slightly differently, plus the beeswax, you're going to create a surface that is incredibly sweet. Um, something that you really want in your cast iron pan. So we're gonna put that to the test. Um, I'm sure some armchair chemist or a real chemist is going to let us know in the comments um, exactly how this works. So if you have insight, please let us know in the comments. So this is almost melted at this point. 
So this is a silicone cannelet mold, which I found to be pretty much useless for making cannelet. Um, the idea is that they're less expensive and easier to use, but I never found it gave a good crust on a cannelet. I think if you're gonna make cannelets, um, and you can't afford these copper molds because I have to admit, these copper molds are unbelievably expensive. Um, ridiculously expensive, especially if it's something that you're not gonna make that often. Uh, get one of these, it's like a muffin pan, but it's a cannelet tin, and it works miles better than these silicone ones. But I have found that the silicone works great for what we're about to do. So, the, uh, everything's melted together. I've been swirling it throughout the process, so it is pretty much mixed. And I'm just gonna pour it into the silicone mold because it's easy to get out. So, in we go. Almost to the top, and we'll fill a second one. Get them evened out. Okay, so I'm just gonna park these on the counter over here for a couple of hours. They'll firm up, and then we can release them from the mold. Okay, on to the frying pans. Okay, so the one with the carabiner is going to be the one that we use the beeswax on. Now the number one mistake that people make when they do this is they use too much oil. You don't need too much oil. Um, you put in just a tiny little bit and then you rub it off completely. Um, as if you've made a mistake, as if you've realized too late that you put something on that you shouldn't put on and you're trying to wipe it all off. Um, and I know that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but the whole idea is that you just want the thinnest of thin layers when you put it back in the oven. So this is, um, this is at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's warm, you can put your hand on it, it's not gonna burn you, but if you hold it for very long, it will burn you. And you just take your puck and you pretty much just barely touch it inside and it will melt. And so just a little bit. Now, see how it's in there? It's just a little bit in there. Take our cloth and we wipe it. And this first wipe is just to make sure that everything is coated and you wanna get everything. You want the handle all around the rim. Um, sorry about the jangling noise. And you wanna do the bottom as well and the outside. Um, you don't want stuff to stick anywhere on your pan. So again, a little bit on and then wipe it off. Now I turn the cloth inside out so that I've got a dry part, and this is where I start to wipe it out. And you wanna wipe as much off as you possibly can. Okay, so this one's pretty much done. Now, everyone makes a big deal of telling you to put this in the oven upside down so that if there's any oil, it drips out. The whole point is, if there's any oil to drip out, you've done it wrong. You've left too much oil on it. You don't want this to feel like oil at all. It just sort of should feel like a little bit slippery, but if you can feel that there's oil inside, you're gonna end up with a really sticky surface, and a sticky surface isn't what you're looking for. So, I would still put it in upside down, just cause you know, you're supposed to, but it's not necessary if you've done it right. So the first pan goes in, and the second pan comes out, and this one we're going to use grapeseed oil, so it's the same procedure, just a little bit of oil in the bottom, I've got a different rag here, and we're just going to wipe it all over before wiping off as much as possible. And just like the other one, you wanna wipe out as much oil as possible. Um, even to the point where you think if you've taken too much out, you probably have left too much in. So, I think this one's looking good. And back into the oven. And the oven gets turned up to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I'm gonna leave that in the oven for about two hours. Uh, then I'm gonna turn the oven off and I'm gonna let it cool down. Now you could leave it in there and come back to it tomorrow and do it again. Or if you're in a rush, when it comes back down to about 225 degrees, you can pull them back out and put on the second coat and then put them back in the oven, back up to 475. And you just kind of go through that process. Um, Three times is gonna get you there, four times is gonna be better, five times is gonna be better still if you can do it. 
but you don't have to. Okay, so these two pans have now gone through five cycles of seasoning, and they look really good. Now, here's the key. After you've done this process, they shouldn't feel at all greasy or oily because there's no grease or oil or wax left on these pans. And that's something I can't stress enough. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that they put oil on the pan, so it's the oil in the pan that's causing this non-stick effect. When the reality is heating it has converted the oil into something else. Um, there's no longer oil on here. And if it feels at all oily or sticky, uh, you haven't done it right. So you want to make sure that you've got a nice smooth surface, no oily feeling, no sticky feeling, no greasy feeling. Um, and these feel wonderful. About a week has gone by at this point, and I have used both of these pans extensively in the kitchen. I've used them equally. I've done things like eggs and bacon and potatoes. Uh, I've fried all kinds of other things. I did a little bit of deep frying as well in them to uh, test out the KFC recipes. And I've also washed them in hot soapy water. I've probably washed them 20 times. And over the course of this week, there has been no degradation in either surface for either of these pans. They've both held up really well. And I must say, if I had a favorite, I think the one that we did with the wax probably held up a little bit better. But this has been a very short term test. And over this week, I've been trying to come up with a stress test that I can completely stress both of these pans and see if I can break the seasoning. Um, and I've got an idea and I'm going to give it a shot. So you'll see that in an upcoming video. I guess the end point for this is um, this beeswax and two oil puck is a great way to season your pans. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I've tried it. I think this is going to hold up for a very long time. But if you already have a process that you use and it's working for you, please continue to use it. Unless you want to try something new, that's great. They've both held up extremely well. I would be happy with both of these pans in my kitchen. So the process of seasoning a cast iron pan isn't that difficult. There's a couple of times to remember, a couple of temperatures to remember. And remember that you don't put on too much oil or wax. And then wipe it completely off. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.